Hey there, welcome to the 20th Easy jQuery tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In this tutorial, we're going to explore creating your own custom jQuery plugins. jQuery is extremely powerful because it gives you so many tools to work with, and it also allows you to extend their library and add your own code to their library as if it was part of jQuery. So before we do that, let's go over the syntax of the of plugins that you'll be creating. So it'll start with the dollar sign jQuery dot fn, which is short for function dot method name. So this is the whatever method that you want to call it. You can call it cube, you can call it highlight, color, etc. Uh, and we're going to assign an anonymous, anonymous function to it and send in optional options. So this is optional because in the next four lines, you can specify default values. So if the user does not send in options, just sends in function, you know, method name, open and close parentheses, you have default value of one and value of two that will be assigned to your CSS that's being returned here instead of instead of erroring out that there is no value. So you can set default values, which is extremely powerful here. To get started, I'm actually going to copy and paste an array that I created earlier. I'm just going to leave it here. It just says hello from easyprogramming.net. It's just separated into different words into this array. In the HTML, I also have a results div ID. So here, here's that we will be targeting later on. So let's actually create our plugin. We'll call it uh, list this. So we're going to take uh, our array here and then list it into HTML here. It's it's simpler than it looks. So we'll do function and open and close uh, curly braces. I'll create a local variable. I'll call it ul for um, uh, an ordered list. Uh, we'll do let's create uh, ul right. So we'll just create this as a placeholder, and then we'll do this dot each. I'll explain what I'm doing here. Function i item. So I am targeting each. So since the array I know will get multiple items uh, because this is designed, this is, uh, if you're creating plugins for all issues, make sure you document this. Uh, we need to go through each of these values one by one. So we'll use uh, each jQuery looping method. This again is referring to the context of whatever is being sent to this method will be targeted uh, using this i and n, and then we'll do something to it. So we'll do uh, ul because we created it here dot append this is pretty uh, simple so I'm not I'm not creating like uh, you know jQuery like list item objects and then doing things it's pretty straightforward so we'll do uh, we'll do append and we'll do item it's pretty straightforward uh, I messed this one up so I didn't get a open bracket here so that's what this sort of underline JS fiddle has gotten really good with the uh, syntax um, so if I update and run this, let's open my console. There's a bunch of errors from before. Um, so zoom in. If I update and run this, I don't get any error. Nothing happens because we didn't do anything with it. So let's continue and actually trigger this new created, newly created plugin. So we'll do uh, results dot append. We'll send in our array, which I just called R, and then we'll do list this. That's all there is. So if, if I did it correctly, it's it should take the array created here and turn it into an unordered list. But actually, I just noticed that I did forget to return the UL. We need to return something that we've done with that with the data. So now if I update and run it, you'll see that it, it just it did list anything. Now if we look at the inspect, if we look at the the HTML here, we'll see that the, the UL was created with a bunch of list items as as expected. So this is pretty simple, right? It's pretty it's pretty cool. You can take a race and, and display it to your web page um, as you would. So I also went over like options, like what if you want, you don't want an unordered list, you want an ordered list, right? So there are a couple ways of doing this. You can send in settings like this and set defaults. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do something really uh, simple. We'll do, we'll make this parameter uh, mandatory. So we'll just list type and we'll do let l, you know, just do list equals to, let's do let's open, there we go. 
and I'm going to send in the list type variable here. So whatever we're sending in the para uh, as an argument here, uh, it will change the list item type here. So uh, just lel, right? So if I don't send anything, it'll error out like, you know, list type not defined. But if I send in ol instead of ul, if I update and run it, see, there you go, I'm returning ul again. So if I run it now, there you go, I get one, two, three, four, five. Now if I do ul, run it, I get dot, 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 dot. And if I don't do anything, I get nothing because there's an error uh, saying syntax error because uh, I'm missing something. So that's expected. So here we're forcing them to do um, ul or ol, and this is something that you should document. But I'm not going to end there. I'll keep going and show you how to extend more with custom with default values here. So we'll actually create another one called, this one will be more straightforward. So we'll do color my list, camel case equals to function. And then we'll send in some options here. Uh, we'll create something called settings, create a variable called settings. And then we'll do dot extend. I did show that here, right? Extend, yeah, that's the, uh, the, the jQuery method that's being used here. And it's looking for some properties. And we'll do color, the default color will be black. Uh, let's do font size is 16 pixels. Sure, why not? And then uh, text decoration is underline. Enter a bunch of spaces here so that you can see better. Don't need that there. So these are the default settings. Uh, we'll also do comma option. Put an S there. Uh, this is telling Extend that these are the default options. Uh, if these properties don't exist in options, just use the default values here. That's pretty much what this is saying. And then we'll do return this.css. So the CSS will need to actually send in some CSS. So we'll do, um, uh, I'll, I'll put some quotes around it. So the color, uh, settings.color, because that's the property, font size. Uh, settings dot font size and then text decoration settings dot text decoration didn't do camel case there that's okay and that should do it so now if I do if you can change chain uh, chain your custom plugins like you would any other normal jQuery method so we'll do ul dot Right, this is what I do. Dot, yeah, dot. So we'll do color. Whoops. Dot color my list, and let's see. Right, just send in nothing. Let's expand this. Run, update, run, and you can see that the the font size did expand to 16, and there's underline, and the it, the color is bold. But let's say I want to send in some properties of my own. Right, so try and make this neat looking. So we'll do color, we'll do FF000, which is red. We'll do font size. Remember this, uh, the, the property you're sending here has to match the default properties, whatever you define here. Otherwise it'll be something different. Uh, we'll do 25 pixels, make it larger. And then text decoration, we'll do none because we don't like underlines. Okay. So now we're sending in proper options to override the defaults. So we'll update and run. So you can see that this took. Uh, the color didn't take because, yeah, the color mistake was that I forgot a zero. So uh, hexadecimal, six digits. There you go, it's red. Now if I do um, zero, zero, FF, zero, zero, get rid of one, run, you get green, and then you know the other ones. I, I just know the basics not uh, not anything more complex so you get blue here so uh, it's pretty cool right uh, send in some other ones just to test run there you go 30 pixels um, text decorations and you know, as underline or uh, other things just basic CSS uh, well anyway I hope you enjoyed this 20 tutorial showing you how to create your own custom plugins I hope it was useful if you have any questions please do visit easyprogramming.net and ask there uh, also feel free to leave a comment uh, on the end of this video here and uh, if you want to see 
future tutorials, do let me know. I am planning on releasing a bunch of Raspberry Pi tutorials, so do subscribe for that. I am planning on giving out a few Raspberry Pi Zeros in the coming months, so if you do subscribe, you'll hear about how to how to get them. Um, the the easy programming that is, uh, is has been redone to allow for Raspberry Pis. Coming soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.